This is Candace Payne from Biz News, and I'm speaking to Daphne Boerter, who is a Bond Portfolio Manager at Future Growth Asset Management. And today we're going to be talking specifically around inflation-linked bonds and how they fit into your portfolio. Daphne, tell us about inflation-linked bonds. Inflation-linked bonds in South Africa is a relatively young asset class. I mean, we consider them as a separate asset class. Many local investors still consider them as part of their bond allocation, which we think is wrong. They should definitely be considered a separate asset class. Because they behave differently to nominal bonds. Yes, definitely. Um, so, so at times you can find that the nominal bonds versus inflation in bonds will react differently depending on how inflation comes out. Okay, and what, and what would make that difference? So inflation in bonds, you, generally the coupon is, you know, the, the coupon and the underlying payment is keeping up with inflation, whereas, whereas nominal bonds is not necessarily so. Yes. So how do they react differently? Um, so, so, for instance, if you look at a nominal bond, for instance, say the coupon is 10%, um, if you assume long-term inflation is 6%, you've got a 4% implied real yield. If inflation comes out higher than that over the period over the life of the bond, you've actually lost some value due to inflation yes. and vice versa. Whereas with inflation-linked bonds, actually it goes the other way around, you've got a real rate which is set much lower, so currently in our market it's between 1.8 and 2%. Um, and then you earn that real yield plus whatever inflation comes out at. So yeah, you don't need to worry about future inflation. You're actually getting the benefits, if it's, especially if it's higher. Um, that's where you would benefit. You would, you would get that automatically in the value of the coupon as well as the value of the capital at the end that you get repaid. So you need to hold it to maturity, essentially. Or are there times when you can sell, you know, you'd buy an inflation linked bond versus a nominal or over a nominal bond? Yeah, you don't need to hold it to maturity. It's built into the pricing of the instrument. So you can trade in and out of it um, in, at, at times, depending on your view on inflation. So obviously, if inflation rises, you want to go and buy as much as you can. But when it peaks and it starts dropping, that's when you want to actually get out of the, the asset class. So where are we in the cycle at the moment? Because there seems to be a lot of pressure on inflation currently. Yeah, look, South Africa is in a very peculiar place where inflation tends to remain quite high. Um, you know, we have a 3 to 6% inflation target range, but in general, I mean, for the last year or two, we've been between 5 and 6%. In fact, the last couple of months, we've actually exceeded the 6% target range. And one of the reasons why the SARP started hiking over the last two years is to, to manage that so that it doesn't get out of control. So where are we in that cycle? Um, we think we're, we're getting towards the, the top end of the range. Um, we can get one or two more spikes higher. Obviously, it depends on where oil comes out at, where food price inflation lands up, also where um, the currency ends up. So, but the forecast into next year, so you always need to look forward. The forecast into next year is for inflation to come down. So we have to, you have to factor that in. So, you know, over the next year, inflation is probably going to go lower rather than higher. So what does that mean for your actual trades? When do you know when you're going to be buying inflation in bonds and when you're going to be buying nominal bonds? So from, a, from an inflation perspective, your inflation carry, as we call it in our market, is probably going to reduce as inflation comes down. But I mean, we're not talking about low, low inflation. Inflation is probably still going to be in the sort of 5% range, which is still relatively high compared to what you're seeing in the rest of the world. So there's, there's still a place for inflation in bonds, especially if you have liabilities as a pension fund that's matched to that. Okay. So that pretty much sorts out the liability side of it. Yes. Let's talk a little bit around the future growth yield enhanced inflation linked bond fund, which you um, form part of the team that manages that fund. Yes. How do you use these in the fund and, and what is your positioning currently? So this portfolio is actually benchmarked to a single one. Our, our oldest fund in that suite is benchmarked to the R202, which is the 2033 maturity um, inflation linked bond issued by the South African government. So we have to match the interest rate risk of that particular bond. Okay. So we take position. So if we think um, inflation is going to rise, or then we'll buy into it and vice versa. But it's also not just that. It also depends on where the absolute level of real yields are relative to where nominal bonds are. So if we think real yields are low, maybe you don't want it as much. But yes. if you think real yields are at a decent level or high enough, then you want to enter that. So there are various factors that will affect so like despite what, what the name implies, inflation-linked bond fund, you can actually use other credit instruments in there to reach your goal. 
So in this particular product, um, we have yield enhancement as an extra value add or extra alpha source in the portfolio. And so because the listed inflation in credit market is very limited, the yield enhancement is very low. On your SOEs, you're talking about 50 to 70 basis points of excess yield. We access the nominal credit market. There, in our un especially in our unlisted nominal credits, we, we're talking about yields in excess of 300 basis points. So we use a combination of these credits, obviously, but by, by accessing that market, we're able to secure higher yields and, and higher excess returns. For Does the that bring in higher risk? You know, everybody's still suffering from the hangover of ABLE last year, yeah. and um, although they may not have understood the credit risk there, yes. many people were exposed to it. What, in this unlisted space, what, what are the increased risks that we're looking at? Well, personally, in our view anyway, um, our unlisted credits have more protections than listed credits. So when you, when you enter credits... Why is that? Because we're built in more covenants, more perfect protections. We have more opportunity to negotiate the legals to our satisfaction as, as lenders. Okay. Just think about when you go and, and, and get a bond at, uh, or loan at the bank. The bank wants everything as security. We are the bank in this case. So we want to take everything that we can to ensure that we get at least our capital back. Um, so you're comfortable that the due diligence has been done by you and that the, yes. the, the credit is worthy? Sure, yes, definitely. And, and also, as I said, we have more chance to affect um, those legals in the unlisted space. In the listed space, it's very much a take it or leave it situation. And in most cases, we actually leave it uh, when we feel uncomfortable with the risks that we're taking on. Credit is about risk and reward, like most investments. Yes. So if you're uncomfortable with the additional risks that you're taking or you feel it's not compensating you for those risks, then you step away. It's, it's quite simple. And, and what has that extra extra layer of, of care meant for the absolute return of um, future growth yield enhanced inflation in bond fund? So over the past three years in that particular fund we've had um, returns of in excess of two and a half percent. It's been fairly consistent and stable um, that you will not be able to get in the listed market, especially not in a vanilla yield enhanced um, inflation linked um, product. That's the real yield you're talking about? No, so that's um, so that's an additional in t terms of the real yield. So yes. if you look at the retur return sources of that fund, you'll get inflation yes. because your return is affected by what inflation offers. Then you get the real yield, which is between 1.8 and, 8, 1 .8 and 2%. Okay. And in addition to that, you get this extra okay. um, so close done, to 3% yield. Really well. Yes. It's done really well through the strategy. Yes, definitely. And if you had to attribute th that performance, does a lot of it come from the unlisted space or is it a combination depending on what's going on? It is a combination. So. The bulk of it is the unlisted yield enhancement. Um, there will be some listed yield enhancement. There will also be some um, return coming from your interest rate positioning relative to the benchmark. And what type of investor would be going into a fund like this? It's, this is more a product for institutional investors. So ideally your pension funds. Your pension funds have pensioners that they have to pay inflation linked liabilities out to. Um, over, over a long period of time. So against that to have an